Our lives are ruled by paper. If I want to buy something, I'll probably use some paper money and that give, get given a piece of paper in the form of a receipt as proof of purchase. If I want to go from one country to another, I might buy a paper ticket and show my paper passport, then buy a paper visa with some more paper money. If I track my journey, I'll probably do it on a paper map. This is one of the ideas in Imtiaz Darker's poem, Tissue that our lives are controlled in some way by artificial constraints that we've woven into the social structures of our lives. All these things fly our lives like paper kites. The simile here seems to invert the paper analogy. Suddenly it's our lives that become like paper flying in the wind, being manipulated, pulled one way or another by the lure of money, the frustrations of bureaucracy or the diktats of a government. We're portrayed as helpless and powerless puppets. Let's look at the fourth stanza though. If buildings were paper, I might feel their drift, see how easily they fall away on a sigh, a shift in the direction of the wind. Now to me, this is all about the idea that when you go home after work or after school, you expect your home to be there. You walk up the road, and you expect the building to still be there. If it wasn't, or if it, it just moved a few inches to the left or to the right, you'd look at it and you'd think, hmm, I'm sure that's not quite where it was this morning. It's a bit odd, my house has moved. We think of buildings and houses as permanent, stable, fixed things. So think about the building that you're in now. The chances are that it will still be there tomorrow and next year and in two years and in five years, 10 years, 20 years? What about 50 years? 100 years? 300 years? The chances are that a lot of the buildings we live and work in will crumble away in that time. And in fact, they might seem fixed, but they're actually moving a millimetre or so every year. The ground will shift, the foundations will sink, a bit of subsidence here or there. You see, I think this stanza is about the fact that human-made institutions and structures of our lives, both the physical and the conceptual ones, are all far more temporary than we realise. If they were made of paper, we'd see it. They'd be like tissue paper houses collapsing as soon as we even breathed on them. But just because they're made of brick and stone, it doesn't mean that our banks and churches and government buildings and monuments are permanent. It's all an illusion. The message is the same as Ozymandias. The Pharaoh might have been a powerful, feared ruler in his day, but his statue is now crumbling away in the desert sands. It's all about the fragility of human power and achievements. It looks quite a bleak poem at the moment, doesn't it? And she is saying, I think, that our human lives, especially in a physical sense, are fragile and vulnerable. As she says, we were never meant to last. Our skin is like tissue paper. The word itself, of course, is referring as well to the tissue of our skin. The structure and form of the poem seems to reinforce this idea too. It's a flimsy poem, irregular and unrhymed, delicate and fragile, flowing with enjambment, not rooted in any firm structure. But then you get to the end of the poem and it's just amazing because we find out about the architect. An architect could use all this, we're told. The architect has a plan that is so much better than anything we could have dreamt up. And the amazing thing is, we are his plan. Who could possibly want to build again with brick when you can trace a grand design with living tissue? It's us. We're the answer. It's like he breaks through the pathetic capitals and monoliths that man has built. The daylight breaks through and he crafts the most incredible thing the world has ever seen. A fragile, vulnerable, delicate human being. Paper that lets the light shine through. This is what could alter things. We were never meant to last in a physical sense, but while we live, we are the most beautiful beings imaginable because shining through us is his light the goodness and creativity and glory of the architect, the maker of the world. Our living tissue will age. Our skin 
will become paper thin. But these physical signs of ageing are nothing to be ashamed of. They're just a sign that we've been smoothed and stroked and loved by our architect and by each other. Because the more we're loved, the more his love shines through us.